Well, everybody, uh, good afternoon. Thanks for uh, continuing to be awake and, and all after lunch. So uh, looking forward to tell you a bit about behavioral analytics and how this can help you with your environment and help you better understand who your customers are. So I guess a little bit of the housekeeping. My name's Ryan Wilk. As, as was mentioned, I head up the customer success group at New Data Security. Um, I come from the e-commerce world. I formerly ran the trust and safety organization for Universal Parks and Resorts, um, as well as uh, running the trust and safety group for StubHub, which is an eBay company. So talking a bit about the agenda and what we're going to be talking about today, looking at the, the current landscape in the, uh, for fraud in the online gaming industry, um, what's, uh, what's on the line? So what is it that we're trying to protect and what is it we're trying to keep safe? Some of the challenges that we're seeing in trying to combat fraud online and trying to, to protect our environments. What is the missing piece in most of our environments today? So really getting into that idea of behavioral analytics and how it can help you, as well as talking a bit about what that is and, and um, what the results of that can be for you. So the industry today, we're under more and more pressure to deliver a good product. There's more companies out there. We're even starting to see the United States get back into the online gaming world with, uh, with fantasy sports betting. So it's continuing to expand. The industry is getting bigger and bigger, and there's more and more competition out there, an increased need to deliver a good product. Increase, uh, the sophistication of fraudsters is continuing to, uh, to increase. Gone are the days when we see that, uh, that bad actor come on and try to uh, commit fraud against us with the same email address 50 times in a row, becoming much more sophisticated in how they're interacting, what they're doing, and how they're attempting to defraud the system. Looking at collusion, collusion is becoming a huge problem. People either working as, with multiple accounts to try to defraud the system or multiple players working together to try to take advantage of folks within the environment. Um, increased uh, need for real-time risk assessment. Um, I think uh, one of the, uh, the folks that spoke a little before me talked somewhat about what we're doing, but talked about it in somewhat of an offline mode, needing to really have this data in real time, understand what's going on in real time, and being able to use this data in an actionable way in real time to be able to protect yourself and understand who your customers are. Then finally, maintaining your customer's trust um, in, in any business, whether it be gaming, e-commerce, banking, retaining the trust of your customer is paramount. Losing that trust creates customer attrition, they move on, and they no longer work with you. So I think this is a, a great image for what we're looking at, and specifically in this industry. You know, do, does everybody have the aces, and who are they? You're, you're dealing in a world of anonymity where people are standing behind machines and you don't really know who they are. So you need to get to that next level where you're not just dealing with a machine, you're not just dealing with something that's connecting to you, but you're truly understanding who's sitting behind that machine, who's the human you're doing business with. You think about any brick and mortar store out there, someone comes in, they hand you a credit card, they hand you an ID, the picture on the ID is not them, you're not going to sell it to them. Online, you have that issue that they're sitting behind a machine, you don't know who they are, but you need to know who they are, and you need to know when it's your customer to know whether to give them a fantastic experience or to stop them and not allow them to proceed throughout the, uh, throughout the environment. So what are those risks? Obviously, the, the largest risk you're facing out there is monetary. Um, that, that's what we're all here for. If, uh, if there wasn't money in the game to be made, none of us would be in business. So you want to retain the money in, you know, that you're making. You want to make sure that the money that you're making is safe and that the money moving through your environment is safe. The reputation of your environment, making sure, again, that, that there's safety. There's a, that level of trust and safety. I, I go back to that word quite often. That, that that's the biggest thing you have, that trust that your customers have in you, and making sure that you can give that trust back to your customers. Again, various things going back to the different card schemes, the different chargebacks that you're trying to avoid within the environment. Um, avoiding member attrition, the, the worst thing that can happen to you, the customers lose that trust and safety, they move on, they go somewhere else, and you've lost them. You've lost, lost that lifetime spend, which in, in any um, business is the most important thing you can have. Compliance. Compliance is becoming a bigger and bigger thing. Needing to make sure that you're protecting, protecting the, uh, the online gaming world, making sure that it's, what it, that, that it's really uh, a trusted environment and trusted by the regulators. Uh, you, you see all the regulations over banks, um, more and more is coming that into the gaming world, making sure that you're ready for that. Then finally, operational um, expenses and operational goals. Uh, as we heard earlier, you know, with, with a lot of these things, the more manual these processes are, the more and more difficult it is to be able to maintain them. What happens when you hit the point where you can no longer operationally maintain uh, your, your, your structure? These, these processes need to be automated and they need to be set up in a way in which you can, uh, you can sustain and scale. 
So what's on the line? Talking about that, that dollar amount again. Uh, the online gaming world uh, is looking to hit about a $27 billion industry this year. Um, that's coming from uh, Ayate. Uh, chart is in dollars. I apologize for that, but I did the conversion on Google a little earlier, and that came out to about 27 billion pounds or 41 point or $41.4 million. So there's a lot of money out there, a lot of money to be made, a lot of money to be lost. So, there's, so we want to make sure that we're making that money and not losing that money. And we want to make sure that the customers and the people interacting with our environments are the people that they're saying they are. So what do we have to authenticate and understand who our customers are today? We have passwords. Passwords are they're, they're basic. I put in my username, I put in my password. It's right or wrong. If I get it right, okay, you let me in. What, what more do you have than that? We have device. Okay, so that's a second layer. We can start to say, we've seen this person coming on this device before. We can trust them because this device has been safe in the past. Well, what happens when they change that device? Device is a very binary thing. If they come on, they're on device that you recognize, fantastic. They change the device, what do you do? You're at a loss again. So what is that missing layer? What's that piece that you can bring in to help try to better understand who that customer is? So the secret weapon. <laughs> so that secret weapon is behavioral analytics and behavioral biometrics. And it's a layered uh, approach to be able to really understand who that customer is and how that customer is interacting. So being able to pull together multiple types of technologies in real time to be able to understand that customer interaction bringing together the idea of device. So device is extremely important, but not just looking at device simply as saying, yes, this device is the same device or this device has changed, but looking at that device to understand how does this user interact on this device type? How do they interact on this device type, whether it be a tablet, a computer, a, a mobile phone, to understand who they are even as they shift through devices. So you make the exact device ID less important and bring, make, bring the importance into the device type and how they interact on that device type. Looking at behavioral analytics and environmental analytics. So each time that user comes to your environment, how are they acting? What are they doing? How are they moving through the environment? And then looking at the environmental factors of, how they're, of, of what's connecting to you. I always use the, uh, the example of my MacBook. For whatever reason, Apple has designed the scrolling on the, on the MacBook trackpad backwards. My brain goes the other way. So the first thing I do with any computer is make sure the scrolling works the way I recognize it to work. It's a unique factor of how I interact. Not necessarily an end all to tell you who I am, but an easy way to understand that this is a factor of how Ryan interacts when he interacts with this environment. So if we start to see machines that are interacting in different ways or set up in different ways, it starts to help us understand that this, this might not be Ryan anymore. This might be someone else that's trying to impersonate him. And then bringing in that idea of behavioral biometrics. So not just understanding the what that has connected to you or the, uh, the, that the username and password was correct or that the, uh, the, the device was what you expected, but understanding it's truly the correct human now interacting within your environment. So when that person comes to authenticate, they're typing in their username and password. Was that really Ryan that typed in his username and password or could that have now been someone else that was attempting to spoof Ryan? And then bringing that all together again in that, that, that real-time manner to be able to slice and dice all of those elements together with the, the second Venn diagram there, bringing them all together to understand who that user is even as they shift throughout, the, uh, shift throughout those data points. As again, I was just saying before, with things like device, they change their device. Okay, what do you do now? You have that simple binary check where they're no longer the same person. You're now lost. You have to try to figure out who they are. You need to try to go through that process all over again. But if you can understand that, hey, look, you know, the device changed, but they got their password right, and wait a minute, it, 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 there's a high probability it really is Ryan based on how he's interacting with the machine. It can give you that level of confidence that it is that good user, it's that person you're expecting, and it's the person you want to have interact with your environment. So what it does, and, and I, we talked a little about this, but it, what, what you want to know is you want to know, is this player behaving like a human? Is it a human on your site? Obviously, you don't want automation. You don't want different types of scripts trying to enter the site, trying to interact with the site, trying to make bets, trying to, uh, to do different things. You want to know, is this user behaving like others? So knowing what's the behavior of your entire aggregate population to be able to understand when there's deviations, when there's emergent threats that are, standing there, that are coming out that don't, that don't make sense within the environment. Then also, is the player acting safely? So you might have your good user, that user's come on, but are they all of a sudden doing things that don't make sense? Um, I, I was given the example the other night of the, uh, the user that came on and you know, they normally bet 10 pounds a week, and all of a sudden they go out to the bar, they get a little too drunk and they bet 1,000 pounds. 
Well, in, as I understand it, the regulations that are coming, you know, you're going to become liable for those types of events to, to be a, if that person complains, potentially having to pay them back that, that data getting into the news. So you want to make sure that they're acting safely, they're doing what they're supposed to be doing, and they're interacting in a way you expect them to interact. So how do we do this and how is this done? So it's really taking that multi-layered approach and these are just some of the examples, but understanding, you know, is that user, are they scrolling, are they not scrolling? Do they tab from field to field? How do they normally interact over time? Being able to aggregate all that information together and create a unique profile for them. So every time that user comes back, you have something to compare it to, to say, it, what's the probability this user is still who I'm expecting them to be? Um, looking at things like typing, type deviation, type speed. Are they, are they a heavy typer? Are they a light typer? On their phone, how much are their fingers actually pressing into the, uh, the touchpad? Is it, are they, is it just a tiny little portion of their fingertip? Is it their full finger? Do they constantly have things auto-corrected because they can't type or they can't hit the, the right little letters? So understanding how they're interacting. The angle of the device. Um, we, we have a banking customer where we see what we see quite often is certain users will sit, we'll, we'll always see them at certain times of night, so understanding when they're interacting with their phones like this. They're laying on their back in their bed checking their balance. So that's an understanding of who that user is and how that user's inter interacting to better understand who they are and when they're doing things that make sense and that is normal for them. Looking at location, again, understanding is the location correct? Are they coming from a place we understand? Not just the same IP, but are they coming from the same geolocation, the same, the same kind of ranges that they would normally be coming from? And finally, layering in device. Understanding, is this the correct device? Does this device, again, make sense? And so really that idea of does this data all, all together, all combined, make sense for who this user and who we're expecting them to be? And then that idea of understanding those interactions and understanding them continuously, not just looking at each thing as a single point, not just using a perimeter style detection means, but understanding that full 360 degree view of how that user is interacting and doing that every time they come on and aggregating that so you understand who that user is every single time they're in your environment. So my picture of the needle in the haystack. And I always like to go back to this analogy. Why are we looking for the needle when all that hay is sitting there? Those are all your good customers. I'm guessing that somewhere in the high 90% of the interactions within all your environments are good, safe customers. You should be giving them fantastic experiences because you're recognizing who they are every time they come back. So instead of just trying to find that one scary little person, give those good customers a great experience, identify who they are, um, and then that, uh, that needle will kind of make itself evident on the floor once you get all those good customers out of the way. So, this was one of our customers, uh, one of New Data's customers. Um, their, their traffic over about a 30-day period, these were logins, so authentication events. As you see here, you know, you, you see your traffic, it's kind of ebbing and flowing, but, what, but, but you, you have no clue what's safe in that environment and what's potentially risk. So then you layer your risk on. And you start to very clearly be able to see who your good customers are, the, the green, you know, you almost, it, I almost refer to it as the EKG. You see that almost every single day they're interacting exactly the way you would expect. And then being able to find those outliers, those bad customers that, that, are, that are doing things that don't make sense, that are, that are just anomalous to that larger environment, that are creating risk and creating uh, potential, uh, potential loss and potential uh, 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 bad things to happen in the environment. So now you know. So the risk presented and exists by existing and new customers. Being able to understand when those customers are creating risk, when they're not creating risk, and when those customers are the people you're expecting them to be. Again, when, that, when it's that correct user behind the account. More than just knowing it's the correct device that has come on, that it's the correct potentially connection, but knowing that it really is the correct human sitting behind that machine. Um, knowing when that user's changed. So even when you see the correct device, you see the correct IP, you can know that it's not the right person that logged into this account. You know, Ryan has his account, I'm perfectly, I'm allowed to gamble, but you know, maybe my son comes on, five years old, and decides to start playing some online games. You have that ability to know, well, they logged into that account properly, but it's not the right person, or being able to see that uh, potentially there, there's some anomaly within there. Understanding when the same user is potentially using multiple accounts for collusion, trying to come on and, and either rig games or do different things within the games to make it look as though that uh, different risky events are happening, trying different ways to scam your environment, and then letting you know who you can trust. And when you know who you can trust, you can give those users a great experience. 
you can validate them early. You can know early on in the transaction that it really is the person that you're expecting it to be, and that allows you to then give them better offers, give them a better experience, make them a more loyal person that wants to interact within your environment because you know who they are and you know there's that level of trust and you know it won't turn into risk. Reduce fraud, and, and it's kind of, it, it's a great side effect. If you know who your good customers are and how people should be interacting, Fraud will, fraud will weed itself out. Those anomalies that just don't, that should not be in the environment, that are not expected and would not, that you don't want to have there. You can accept more players more quickly and reduce that risk. Continuing to, to expand your environment, bring on new users and bring on users in a trusted way. And then create a, a, a just a more, a better quality experience for those trusted users continuing to grow your environment, and then really adding that, uh, that, uh, that capability of being predictive around who your good customer is, and then being predictive around what a uh, potentially risky event might be. So, you know, this was a, an interesting study that was done by, uh, by Gartner. It was a survey. It said that about 60% of the respondents were, were perfectly okay with additional uh, means to be able to authenticate them, putting more friction in front of them. 40% said they didn't want anything. So, I mean, that's not a great breakdown. So, you know, you put in some more, you put in a, a risk solution. Well, you've made 60% of your environment happy, but 40% unhappy. You don't put it in, and then you put yourself in place for risk. What you really want is you want a solution that can passively identify who your users are, understand who your good and bad users are, to be able to authenticate, be able to protect your environment without actually putting anything in your customer's face that might potentially hurt the, uh, hurt the interaction. <laughs> And then the big wins. You know, behavioral analytics, as I was saying, it gives you that ability to both understand your good customer, identify the good customer, and also uh, identify what is risk in the environment, reducing false positives, growing sales, being able to give those good customers better offers, riskier offers, reducing that friction, so making sure that you're authenticating your users, you're understanding who they are, but you're not doing it in such a way that you're potentially hurting your sales, hurting your ability to, to continue to grow. Improving conversion. By, by knowing what is that risk and what is that lack of risk, you're, you can allow more of those users to interact and to spend more. And that's really the end goal of this, right? To, to have them spend as much as possible in a safe and trusted way. And then again, increase that trust and safety across your envi entire environment, being able to, uh, to, to just create that good experience. Keep going back to that same world, but it's really that, that part. We've, we've talked so much about risk, we talk so much about fraud, but why are you spending so much time looking for fraud, looking for risk, when there's so many good customers you could be giving a good experience to? And then finally, uh, closing up with the presentation, appreciate your time today. Um, you're welcome to uh, come on and download a, a, a free Gartner survey from our website, learn a little bit more about behavioral analytics, um, as well as uh, coming on and, and taking a look at the site. Thank you, everybody.